Watching this nice uh, theatrical, and this is exactly what happened with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, or what was once Mercury, and the open source and the Selenium community. And I will guide you in today's uh, presentation on how the market has shifted over the last 15 years, uh, how everything looked like 15 years ago, and how it looks like uh, today. So. A bit about myself, my name is Ori Bendit. I've been uh, with uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Software for the last six years. I started my career uh, as a testing engineer. I was an information engineer. I used um, UTP, FIST, which is a, an internal tool, also a Selenium for the last 15 years. And over the last years, after I've been a QA manager for uh, three years, then I switched into the world in the, the world of product management, where I now lead a brand new uh, offering, which is uh, due to be released uh, later today, uh, sorry, later this year. Um, I've been responsible for great products such as Boosty, UTP, Load Runner, and the Selenium Scorecard over my uh, short career. So, other than that, uh, I'm uh, Michael's father, who will be eight uh, months old next uh, week. I'm uh, married to Nomi, which is an experienced architect, and I can promise you that over dinner we keep fighting about uh, the experience, and this is how uh, the dinner goes in our place. Uh, for small talk later, uh, when we have time, then of course I'm a huge Star Wars fan, uh, a certified Jedi master. Um, I'm a huge San Antonio Spurs fan, uh, one of the biggest in Israel, and Liverpool fans. Any Liverpool fans here? and a Patriots fan in the NFL. And of course, uh, this is me last week watching uh, the uh, Euro uh, football uh, with my uh, team. So this is about me, and now let's start. Let's get to business. And let's start with blowing up some myths about vendors, about enterprises, about cooperation, and software testing. So first myth is that vendors such as Mercury, Enterprise only use their own tools. And I can promise you, and you will see it today, that it's not about the tool. It's about finding the right tool for the right product. And this is the mantra that we have, although we, we can uh, uh, have the ability to come and tell all of our testing team, you must use the UBT, you must use the UBT. That's not how we do this. It's about finding the right product, uh, the right testing tool for the right product. Myth number two. Evil corporations, sorry, dark side, hate open source. And as you can see that we're here, and it's kind of an irony, and I saw some tweets about it during the day, uh, that the successor of Mercury and UTP is now sponsoring the Selenium conference. And the fact is that we actually love open source. Uh, if you love open source, we love open source. And I will show you today how we are leveraging Selenium web driver and the rest of the open source. And the uh, uh, third myth is that everybody does automated testing in our uh, QA team. And the thing is that not everybody is doing, but definitely everybody is using automated testing. And I will show you exactly how it's being done. With that, let's take a walk down history lane 
And let's go to a World Wide Web long time ago and far, far away. Although it's not that long time ago and not so far, far away. And let me take you to the days where the internet looked like that. The happy days of Web 1.0. This is actually the HD site. And this is Amazon at the time. Are familiar with the web uh, archive uh, projects and they store all these uh, images. And this is Microsoft, the first Microsoft server. This is how the website looked 15 years ago. And I have a question for you. Do you remember the first website that you ever visited? If you do, raise your hand. I'm a no brainer. Oh. <laughs> okay. What was it? Alpha B. Okay, and back, uh, down back. Yeah. Okay. I can tell you my own personal uh, website, the first one. It was spurs.com. This is exactly how it looked like. It took like seven minutes for it to load on my father's laptop, and I will never forget the moment. It was after you know, the, the modem and this, the new computers, and all the, the nice things that we had in the late 90s. And this was my first website. And in that day, the testing tools looks exactly like that. This, this is the first version of UTP, okay? It was released in May 98, uh, and it was called at the, at the, at the time Astro Fixed. And let's fast forward to uh, 2003. So this is the HD site with the, some memes. And this is Amazon, some uh, some red, Microsoft. And this is UTP five. This is uh, how it looks. Some of it, I can promise you, still lives today in the web. So this is how it looked like in uh, 2003. Fast forward to. timeline, something happened, okay? And I will talk about it in a bit. This is Amazon, this is Microsoft, and this is UTP version 2.19. And as I said, during that time, there was a disturbance in the, in the test automation course, uh, which we now understand that is a good disturbance. Yep, during those times, Selenium, uh, was released, Selenium 3.1, and then Selenium 4.0. This is July 9, uh, 2011, and version 1.0.3 was released somewhere in 2010. This is when I joined the HCE. And what Selenium gave the community and the test uh, automation world, as I see it, and uh, something cool to be part of. And this is something that uh, up to till today we see it, especially with this um, conflict. So this was released uh, almost six years ago, five years ago, something like that. And I'm only standing here right now. And this is because everything has to try to take time. And this is why we must have patience. And it took us time as HPS and Mercury to understand that it's not about us versus them, the, the commercial versus the office store, but we can work together. And not it's not a, a battle anymore, but we can be friends. And this is exactly the irony and the reason that I'm standing right here with you as a sponsor for the Selenium uh, conference. And I would like to point out the specific time that we understood that we need to shift our uh, way of thinking. It was during uh, last year, the uh, Microsoft announcement of Edge support of WebDriver. And at that time, I can promise you that the guys uh, in our headquarters in, in Palo Alto started to look at it and, and said, okay, perhaps we did something wrong. And from that point on, everything as I said, it is no longer us versus them, but let's see how we can work together. And 
And with that, I would like to show you a moment of chemistry. I started my career, I studied biochemistry, uh, and then uh, I moved to the science of ammonia. This is mercury, okay, it's being used uh, mostly to treat the cancer thermometer uh, a while ago, now with two poisons in the mix. And selenium is being used mostly as an additive to glass. It's painted, it can give a glass the color red, okay? And the urban legend says, the urban legend, I mean in Armenia, that selenium is called selenium because it was supposed to be a cure for mercury poisoning. We're talking about the days of uh, 2006, where QTP was probably uh, the, the most dominant uh, successful medicine tool, and that was the urgent, the urban legend, and this is why selenium is called selenium, and it's still being used. And what I did over the last two weeks is the fact that I wanted to investigate, to see whether I can do this. And the fact is, I'm very sorry, but it's not true. It makes perfect sense to today because there was little evidence in real research about the effect of selenium on mercury uh, uh, toxicology uh, modification. So it actually means that selenium is not the cure to treat mercury, which makes perfect sense because today we are talking any questions on the brief history? With that, I would like to show you how we are using selenium today in HPV. So we'll start with something that for us is very obvious, but um, uh, I had uh, some discussion with uh, the guy from Microsoft in Israel, and we thought what we're going to talk about will probably more be the HPV, and he said that for me, as I said, it was obvious, but for them, it was something uh, very new. And remember that I said that benzodone is the central receptor, and we actually also use it in cancer. So basically what we have is that we are building an automation framework on top of selenium, it usually uses between three and four layers. It really depends on the implementation. The first layer is the infra, kind of the bare metal that work with the web driver, handle papers and everything. And everything calls it something different, but it's still more uh, called infra. On top of that, we have uh, the logical container, which actually represents uh, a module that in the application, if I that has a key in an opt that is called in and has its username, password, and all of the attributes. Um, some teams have their actions, which are small building blocks. So for example, they will decide that login has an action that is called do login uh, or create user. And instead of writing the entire step, we just call the method that is called login and uh, it responds. And of course, the last part is the tests that are complete end-to-end -end business flows that cover the entire application. The benefit of writing uh, such framework on top of Selenium, I'm sure that uh, some of you are using that as well. So we are talking about reuse of testing assets of up to 50 percent. So we don't need to code anything all the time. We just have a, a framework. Of course, maintainability. So I don't need to copy and search in my code where I need to change uh, my uh, object in case something is changed. And the last thing, and when I was a QA uh, manager, this was one of the most challenging things for me. I wanted to see how I can leverage my entire team, even the less technical and more business oriented uh, testers. And this was the way that I was able to do it. In my last role, I uh, automated a Node.js uh, Angular uh, application. I had one automation engineer in the team, and she was amazing. She did all the hard work, and it allowed me to have 400% increase in the number of automated testing because she was the automation enabler for the rest of the team. So, so she was 
written up till the action, and then the rest of the team was completing the test in their own uh, language. I will show you exactly how to do it. What I'm going to show you now is a list of products, real products, that are currently in production, being used probably by some of you, and are being tested with Selenium. Okay? And these are real application, no demo tools, real custom solutions. Okay? So, low, the summoner load, uh, if you've probably heard of Load Runner, is our cloud offering for performance testing in the cloud. And they are our most advanced automation team. They are writing the script in Java, the test in JavaScript, and they are using Grunt and Jasmine to run everything. What they did is they have um, three layers of automation. They have their infra, which is being developed by uh, the automation tech team. They have their containers, which can be developed by the dev testers to create the software that you need to test. And the last part is the actual test. Those are Jasmine files that represent a real business flow, and these are being written by the entire testing team. So this is from our load, and I will show you the test and the successful justification of this. So, okay, so you don't see it, but this is the infra, okay? If you want, just come outside the booth, and I will show you exactly the code. Here it says, this is the structure, and here it is what is the, all of the um, different locations. Okay, so this is the first uh, layer, which is the, the infra. This is pure, uh, uh, this is the structure. It also has some calls directly to the web driver. Okay, and this is again only being handled and maintained by the automation team. The next part is the containers, okay? As you see, they are listed here. This is a, an object that represents the toolbar. It um, ex exports the different methods that it has. And again, this is developed by each dev tester that is re responsible for the test. Okay? And the last part is a main test, or it's a, sorry, it's a Jasmine test, and here you can see that the test is in, in almost in the same place, okay? This is toolbar, which was defined in the container, dot click, and then you can see some uh, uh, button, and then you can check that the form is being displayed. Again, it's an almost plain input, so the uh, manual testers can easily run and define their own uh, test. So this is Stormrunner Load, and the next product that is being used is our latest uh, ALM Explained, which is our next, gen next generation uh, application management solution. Their test is being written in Java, okay, and they are being executed in JMIT, nothing fancy, but the important thing I think you can see here is that they started writing their code in JavaScript, they were actually writing it in TypeScript, and then uh, they moved back to Java, okay? So this is the kind of uh, transformation that uh, we have. They are using four layers of automation. They have the core, the infra, that uh, talks to the web driver and locators. This, uh, they are doing that with the one of the developer artifacts, okay? They, uh, they have the entities. Again, each uh, application is actually written its own entity. And actions are the small building blocks that says begin, create a new begin user, and so forth and so on. And the last part is the tests that are being uh, written uh, in almost plain JavaScript. Okay, again, so this is the core, this is the, the, the abstract layer that I was talking about in the slides. And on top of that, there is the entities. and you can see that it has some base elements and some locators. Again, this is being developed not by all of the testers, but by the more technical testers, okay? And the 
last part of the test is almost interesting, so it says the representation is too high. So you can see that it has a UI and then it has an option for the background which is the music and then it has three rules which is again almost the same thing as the to make it easy for everybody to see but doesn't have much to focus on web driver can write and extend to the original web driver. So this was ALM obtained and strom undefined. The next product is one of the most complicated products that for recording web application on the UI level or for common setting. So you can run it as part of the browser and it, the, the amount of technology which are being involved here is crazy. So you get the two client sidebar here. This is JavaScript, okay? You have the two client toolbar, which is also JavaScript. You have the Firefox browser because it's the, this is the plugin on top of Firefox. Firefox browser that is using this application. We have the status pane, which is actually the WWF, you don't actually want to click on that. And the actual website, which is Webby, okay, all the different uh, technologies. You just think of how complicated it is to uh, test this kind of application. So what we did is we decided to go with PHP, okay, and you can uh, hear all about PHP outside. Um, and we used the application model from Linuxy. And the nice thing here is that we combine Linuxy with Selenium together. So we are handling the Windows application part, the WPF part, and the JavaScript part with Linuxy, and then interacting with the web elements with Selenium. Okay, so this is the web product that we are so this is Linuxy, and you can see that the launcher is WPF, the browser is Windows, and web is the thing that we are using here. Any questions on this? And as I said, the, the, the uh, state of mind for us changed, and this was the first time that Linuxy and Selenium, okay, was combined in one project in one test uh, in order to close the technology gap. And we also see that coming from our customer base. Okay, the next thing is, as I said, one of the most interesting things that we have over the last year, and it's how Linux C and UFC are using web browsers. Okay, so if you remember, I talked about Microsoft Edge and the fact that it came out of the box to support for uh, web driver and the thing is that in Edge, they didn't have the possibility to do it up till now, and we had to support that in our solution. So what we did is in Linux C and UFC, we are actually using web driver to talk, to launch, to talk, and to execute our UFC and Linux C scripts uh, directly on Microsoft Edge. So what happens is that we are actually using Selenium web driver GitHub binding, okay? We are launching the edge driver, okay? Through uh, UFC or Linux C, it's the same. And then using the web driver API, we are talking to Microsoft Edge. So we have our own uh, flavor of Microsoft Edge with the ability to uh, execute the uh, web driver. Okay. So how it works, so we have on a replay or a record, if you like, so in the initialization phase, we are talking, we have the web driver host that will talk to either the browser driver or his mobile part, which is the Apple server, and then we are asking for a new web driver. Then we are getting the web driver session uh, back. We are sending the uh, web driver execute script, which actually takes our agent, okay, and injects it into the, uh, the Edge browser. Then we are getting an event and a JSON that represents the browser that we are going to work with. 
and then some internal uh, messaging, and from this point on, uh, we are here, we are loading the web, this is what is called WebKit, and uh, at the end we get a response saying simply, okay, we are ready to test uh, with Logfish. Okay, and what happens during the test? So let's say that we need to execute uh, an action on a certain object, then we send a query, okay, to the uh, using the web driver API to match, and then we are executing the script and getting the object ID. So here this script contains the uh, property of the object, and then once the object ID is returned, we are sending which method is invo invoked, the keys, clicks, and the, 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 the rest of them, the, the execute script executes actual method on the object, we get the response JSON, and then we continue working with the object, so forth and so on. So this is how we use WebDriver to access a Microsoft Edge, and as I said, this was the first time that we used WebDriver in order to interact with any browser. Up till that point, we had our own agent, our own plugin, our own extension, this was the first time that we used web driver to interact with a browser. The, the next part is mobile center, which is our uh, one-stop shop for mobile testing in the enterprise. We have a demo outside that you need to come and see it. And it supports all sorts of uh, capabilities, whether it's functional testing, testing, security testing, sentiment analysis, everything is being supported as part of uh, the mobile center. And what we did in version uh, 2.0, which we just released last month, is we actually implemented the use of an Appium script inside mobile center. So you can now run your Appium script against mobile center. We have a live uh, demo working just outside, so make sure devices which are connected in uh, to the testing lab, the mobile lab, okay, or uh, you can also use up to device farm or lab farm. So this, and this was the first time that we used open source testing tools, Appium, in an open, in, in HPE tool. First time it was done last year. So everything that you can see over the last year, as I said, changed the state of mind and are now using and leveraging and working together and the last use case is Linux D uh, that, it, that can be uh, integrated together with Selenium and the why would you like to do that we have some videos on the outside of this today and you can enhance the, your Selenium script either with new technology technologies other than web and mobile and also for improved object uh, identification so in case you have uh, you have a coding uh, uh, thing in Selenium then you can uh, boost it up with Linux D and with Linux D you also get the application model uh, for robust and, and very uh, easy to maintain application structure and how you can do it, so Linux D was built from day one uh, to uh, integrate with all of the existing uh, dev ecosystem. So you can do it either by having one project that uses both Selenium and Linux D, or you can even put
put the same in the same script both Selenium and Nginx. So you start with WebDriver, switch to Nginx, and go back to Selenium. And as I said, you can do it with the application you set in the structure and the object spy, which has become the thing that helps you identify the objects and very easily recreate the application. So here, this is how it looks. Okay, we have a script that is uh, using the Chrome driver to get to one uh, website. And then we are searching for Star Wars and uh, this is the uh, Linuxy. And then we keep switching between uh, Linuxy and Selenium, but they keep becoming the uh, example. And we have, as I already showed you, uh, inside in our module, we are using uh, that in this way. And also, we also uh, have custom rules that are already using both Linux and uh, Linux. I have a couple more minutes. And I can also promise you that this is only the beginning of the journey for us. And I can promise you that in the Selenium conference in London that was just uh, announced yesterday, uh, I will have much more solution to tell you uh, that we are currently working on. And also we are looking to give back to the Selenium community, whether it's in terms of uh, advanced locators that we are looking to, to contribute. We are also looking to contribute in the area of uh, object testing for Selenium and also some brand new uh, solutions that just remember the robot and we'll talk about them. With that, I would like to uh, thank you for attending uh, this uh, session and well, uh, greet you with the main the open source BGC GitHub open source. Make sure to come and visit us in our booth. I will take any question if you have. Cool. Thank you.